Lord, open our eyes to see you, our ears to hear you, and our hearts to receive you. Amen. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. The gospel this morning is about the abundance of God's love for the world. This morning is Trinity Sunday in the church's liturgical calendar, and this is the Sunday that we look at that awesome and mysterious relationship of one God in three persons. The Jews proclaim the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. This was the prayer of Jesus' disciples, since they were Jews. And the Nicene Creed that we will say this morning affirms our faith in God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. But it was developed over several church councils that spanned 126 years, from 325 to 451. It was conceived out of the debates about the nature of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. What was their relationship? How could there be one God in three persons? So the Nicene Creed was written to state the nature of the Trinity. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. This is the God that Nicodemus knows in the Gospel of John that we just heard this morning. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Nicodemus comes to Jesus seeking the light. Nicodemus is looking for a logical answer to the healings and teachings that Jesus has been doing. He wants to understand. Nicodemus' knowledge and status as a Pharisee and teacher have not given him eyes to see whom Jesus really is and he doesn't understand. Nicodemus, in the Gospel of John, is in the dark. For God so loved the world, the whole of scripture is a love story between God and creation. God sent prophets to proclaim God's love to each generation until the creator gave God's self to the world through the incarnation. The incarnation demands a choice. Do we believe in Jesus or continue to live in darkness? The writer of the Gospel of John never uses the word faith. Instead, he uses believe, which places the emphasis on action by the individual person. It is each person's own choice whether or not to believe in Jesus and accept the fullness of God's love. God never forces anyone to accept his love. It is freely offered. So that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. For the writer of the Gospel of John, eternal life is knowing Christ. That is, accepting God's love in this life, not at some future time. John's theology is called realized eschatology. We are already living in God's kingdom, but it's not yet fully manifested in this world. Those who believe in Jesus, the true light who enlightens everyone, have eternal life and do the works of God helping to bring the fullness of the kingdom into being in our world. So here is Nicodemus asking Jesus, how can this be? Nicodemus has the knowledge of God, but has not accepted the love of God manifested in Jesus. He stands in the presence of love and is given the choice. Does he accept the love that God is offering, or does he walk away into the darkness? At this point in the narrative, it doesn't say either way. The choice to accept the love of God offered through Jesus Christ continues to be offered to each person today. Who we become is determined by our response to Jesus' love for us. Jesus is the manifestation, the incarnation of God's love in the world, and each person continues to be offered the choice to accept the love of God in our own lives or to live in the darkness of the physical reality that we can see in the world. Nicodemus could see only what his senses told him was real. He didn't comprehend fully the spiritual realm 
that was present before him through Jesus. Last Sunday at Pentecost, we celebrated God's spirit moving in the world to empowering Jesus' disciples to proclaim the kingdom of God in the world through their lives. In the Nicene Creed, we say, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Spirit is the one who has spoken through the prophets. The Spirit of God is active in the world through us. The Spirit gives us new life to follow Jesus Christ and to do the works that he has given us to do. Eternal life begins now, not at some future time. And the Gospel of John, believing in Jesus, brings new life that begins now and will continue after death. Eternal life is a transformed life through Jesus Christ rather than some reward that we receive at our death. The love of God is freely offered today. We are to take that love out into our world through the power of Christ's Spirit dwelling within us. The same Spirit that brooded over the waters of the earth at creation empowers us to bring the kingdom of God into being through our lives. The Spirit helps us to see God's presence in the world around us. When I go on my yearly Ignatian retreat, which I will do in two weeks, I walk a lot. So I go out in nature and I walk and I just notice, I stay present in the moment, and I notice the trees, hear the birds, and watch what the animals are doing. And it's a gift to be present to the beauty in the world, God's creation. Some people say that they can relate to God better in nature than through coming to church. Church is where we are nourished and fed to go back out into the world. Nature gives us a place to appreciate the beauty that is around us, to notice God's presence. We actually need both. We need to be with a church community, and we need to experience God's presence through the beauty of nature. To just take the time to be present to what God wants to show us. It is God's spirit working through us that gives us the eyes to see God in the world, and it's through coming to church to be nourished by Christ's body and blood and supported in our faith journeys by our brothers and sisters in Christ that we grow in our faith in God. We need both church and time in nature. It isn't an either or situation. As I read this week in a commentary, the whole mission and purpose of God in Christ is to rescue and recover humanity from being deeply embedded in self-defeating pursuits in a physically absorbed life. Nicodemus was a good man a leader of the Jewish people, but he was also absorbed in the physical life. He was living in the dark and didn't see God's Spirit standing in front of him in Jesus Christ. He didn't perceive God's love incarnate in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Be open to living in the light to having eternal life now, so that you can perceive, as we sang this morning, all thy work shall praise thy name, and earth and sky and sea, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Amen. <laughs>